So let's talk about MLB The Show 21 covers. Welcome, my name is Kasabi, and I've been doing a bit of speculation today, mostly just because of the new Jackie Robinson covers that we found on Instagram earlier today. But uh, the ones that you're looking at right here have been confirmed by GameStop. Fernando Tatis Jr. is going to be on the cover of MLB The Show 21. Uh, was confirmed by a Funko Pop collector named a Nerdy Dad on Instagram, who's also leaked a few other video game covers in advance. I don't doubt him. Uh, I was for a while a Funko Pop collector, and not to the extreme of these guys, but they are notoriously known for leaking. I mean, besides the fact that they leak Funko Pop information like spoilers for movies like there's legit ben movies where funko has to make the figures like six months ahead of time and then gamestop has to do pre-orders and people are able to by and large like piece together how certain things in the movie or tv show will go just based on the characters they see i remember distinctly the fact that the mandalorian pops could not come out until the show had already been aired in addition to that, the Baby Yoda ones were on the second line just because that was like the big reveal of the TV series. Let's take a look at these covers here now that we have them available. Uh, when this leak first appeared yesterday and before it was confirmed by GameStop, just a lot of things stuck out in my mind. So first of all is the MLB The Show theming. We have kind of a similar typeface to similar editions of the show. Uh, I do like the 21 that's in the, the light blue. That was something that I saw just like, okay, like, you know, this is something that like, if it were a person that were just Photoshopping for the fun of it or trying to get clicks or cloud or whatever, like, I don't know if they would have changed the color of that. And if they did, it probably wouldn't have looked this good. It's clean. They actually have like a kind of gravelly, like texture inside the white where it says the show. I also, knew that they probably would likely not have the cover athletes in the studio to do like all the fancy photo shoots like i'm sure you remember like the bryce harper ones where he's like wearing a t-shirt and sweatshirt or whatever and there's like the huge pantone colors in the background they, they didn't really have time for that they couldn't do a whole bunch of covers so this is about the best you can get is like a photoshop job but you have like the background with like the rips and tears let's say like el nino and has like uh, Fernando in the background, you know, MLB the show is getting a little bit more of their own aesthetic as the years go on. A lot of the older shows were just like cover athlete on top of a, you know, solid background with maybe like a baseball stadium in the background. Like now they're kind of kicking it up a notch from like the aesthetic purposes ever since they had like, I would say Griffey on the cover, but especially like last couple years with Javier Baez and Bryce Harper. Uh, the other things that stuck out to me before this was confirmed were the logos at the bottom. So you have the new MLB Players Association logo. A lot of people might have used the old one if it was a fake or they're doing a Photoshop job. You have the PlayStation Studios logo, which kind of looks funny on the Xbox version of the game, but that is a new logo. Sony San Diego Studios split up into San Diego Studios. I think it was like within the last year, year and a half. So they have like the new logo for that too. That's been out there for a little bit, but just all those things combined, you have all those new logos. That's really cool. The one thing that I kind of noted was the fact that the Nintendo Switch version is probably not gonna come out. I mean, first it was the leaks. You had these two covers right here and then GameStop had all the standard edition covers for like PlayStation and Xbox come out. We didn't see anything with Switch. And as disappointing as that is, I kind of had a feeling in the back of my mind that that would be the case just from the fact that like PS5 and Xbox are very similar in, in terms of like you porting it from one console to the next. We see a lot of games or studios where they do like PlayStation and Xbox first and then the Switch one might come next year. And the reason for that is they're very similar, the Xbox and PlayStation versions, but like to dumb it down onto a Switch version probably should have used a different term for that not dub it down but uh, the processing power and just the ability of the switch isn't comparable like you can't do all three simultaneously like ps5 and xbox are very close and the switch is just kind of off on its own so i can see where they might push the switch version to next year and then there is another leak that may or not be fake 
I'll bring that up here in just a second, but like that one also did not have the switch option. The other question that people had was the PC version, since a lot of Microsoft is kind of synonymous with Xbox and PC. I really doubted that we'd see a PC version as well, just from the fact that there are a lot of sports games where they just got back into the PC market. There's a few games like NHL that still don't have a PC market. I just don't think that they would have had the sales, like even comparable between Xbox or even Switch. Like, I don't know why they'd spend all that time and effort on the PC version, aside from the fact that maybe you could play on your Xbox and then play on your PC, because like those are a bit interchangeable with Xbox's system. But regardless, Xbox hasn't had a baseball game aside from like RBI baseball or Super Mega Baseball. They haven't had like a real like simulation baseball game for I think it's been like eight years now. So they're going to get a huge chunk of the market back with that alone. Just people who, you know, in past years have just bought a PlayStation just to play baseball, like simulation baseball. And now they can go back to Xbox if they prefer, if they've always been like an Xbox person. So Sony is going to get a ton of money for that. And that might help polish next gen for MLB The Show 22, or they can put that towards the Switch version. But you're going to get like a ton of microtransactions just from the Xbox market alone, a ton of traffic. The other thing I'm going to bring up the other leak that I saw here earlier today is just like server traffic. If you did all three games at the same time, the likelihood that the servers would crash is pretty high. I mean, we've seen it with just PlayStation launches alone, where it's been kind of rough. The last few years, they've done some betas, they've done some early access. I think that's more to just buy themselves a little bit of time and research to figure out like, how can we make this game run as smoothly as we can at launch? So I'm gonna bring up the other leak that I saw here, Jackie Robinson cover that I saw earlier today. So first I just wanna take a look at this itself. We've never seen a cover where there have been two different athletes, so that's kind of taken me a bit by surprise if this is true. Nothing's really been confirmed yet. Uh, you've had different cover athletes between like MLB and Canada, so you know, you might have some Blue Jays players if you're in Canada where you know it's like a different player for the US version. But these are the deluxe editions, which GameStop did not leak or was not able to, and typically GameStop is the one that has the exclusivity with the baseball caps, like the, I think it's the MVP edition that they tend to have. So this could be legit for all I know. I did a little bit of digging after I found it on Twitter and Instagram, and uh, my gut kind of tells me it's fake, but let's just take it for what it is at face value here before we get too into that. So you have the Jackie Robinson edition MLB The Show, let's just talk about what could be legit with this release. So first of all, Jackie Robinson, uh, it's his birthday today actually, it would have been 102, I found that out a little bit after the fact, but I just thought that was kind of peculiar to have that news on the same day. The baseball cap is a lot more generic than usual, and I know in a couple years past they've had a few like PlayStation type things on the hat so like the one i'm wearing now they have like playstation mlb the show like 15th anniversary you can't really do that if you're putting it on xbox this year and concurrently they've had some themed based on like the player athlete who's on the covers like this is the Hoppier Baez themed mlb the show cap normally they announce the cover athletes in november or you know late fall after the world series this year with like the coronavirus and all these other underlying causes. I'm not really sure they knew who the cover athlete was going to be right away, or they couldn't have the studio shoot that they normally have. So it makes sense to me that all those things considered, that they just have a lot more of a generic hat than usual. One that just says MLB The Show, as opposed to like a Padres theme hat, for example. So that probably could have been the hat if it were Robinson or Fernando Tatis like on all the covers maybe not even just like a 50 50 split I could totally see where it's just like you know for making the hat and production and all those things like you know generic hat would have made sense so they also have the different covers for the different Jackie Robinson editions so they have the deluxe edition digital deluxe which 
Digital Deluxe doesn't actually have like a cover. Like they just have the little icon that they show on the PlayStation Store, or Xbox Store, I would assume. Aside from that, let's look at the other things here. The Show 21, the fact that it's just kind of black on top of Jackie Robinson and just really doesn't blend well with his arm is a little bit distracting. So where it says Digital Deluxe, like the top right one, it does seem to blend a little bit better and I just think that's because it's not as solid of a black. So looking at this, you know, where it says the show 21 on a couple of them look a lot more dark black compared to like the faded one. So that could be indicative of a Photoshop or something like that. But if I were SDS and this was the actual cover, I probably would have added another outline just to make it like pop out and, you know, not blend too much between like the logo and the player. It's not really good looking to the eye so much. Conversely, if we look at the top here, we have the kind of ripped tear thing that says Jackie Robinson, which if you pull up the PlayStation cover one more time here, you kind of see that behind Tatis here where it says El Nino. So that's where I was just like, okay, if you had one day to make this Photoshop, that's a very good like attention to detail that you might have had, you know, a bit peculiar there. Roll to the bottom here with this Jackie Robinson thing here. So this is the other part it says support the Jackie Robinson Foundation Scholars Program if you pre-order. And it has some information here. It says available on PlayStation and Xbox, which is similar to what we saw with the GameStop leaks. There is no Nintendo Switch version. So that's the other thing where it's just like, you know, if you put these two together, uh, it does make it look a lot more legit. The fact that you have PlayStation Xbox covers, but not Switch. And then it also says early access, which I found a bit strange to start just from the fact that you know, you're already releasing the game a little bit later than normal terms just because of like the pandemic and new generation. I didn't quite do my research when I made my first video about the matter of like when MLB show 21 is going to come out. But uh, when they had a new generation console, they released the old gen ones, same as always. And then the new gen ones would come out close to May, I think it was. So I could see where, you know, they just kind of sandwich them in the middle because if you have the ps4 version like you know you can just play that on ps5 whereas if you release everything for everyone at the same time everybody's happy at the same time you also have server issues where everybody's trying to get online at the same time xbox playstation online communities just really slow to load and stuff like that that's where the early access makes sense to me because they have for the people who pre-order an extra four days to figure everything out. You have like a soft launch with a sizable part of the community. And then the main launch comes a few days later. And that's when like everything just gets added in. And you know, that's where they can take a look at the studio and just be like, all right, here's what we need to do before the second launch comes, the main launch comes, and here's what we need to fix before then. So I don't think they're trying to, you know, be scummy and get a bunch of pre-orders for that reason they're just trying to if this is legit maybe figure out like the online connectivity parts of the game so the last thing i want to talk about here is the tweet that i just saw from mlb the show and this is kind of funny it just popped up on my twitter feed like 10 minutes ago mlb the show earlier said that they were going to have news in february and everybody's just like all right is it gonna be february 1st because you know it's technically february so this tweet's kind of funny because it says the cover athlete gets unveiled and interviewed tomorrow can't interview jackie robinson unfortunately as much as i'd like to but it's sponsored by mlb the show mlb the show quote tweeted it with the eyeballs emoji so it could just be that they've already had this set up and february 1st was their plan the whole time it could be this leak for the gamestop version where, you know, they saw that and they're just like, we need to address this as soon as possible. But nonetheless, a cool tweet to look at and speculate about. Cover athletes always the first thing they're going to talk about. So I feel like at this point with the leak, it's kind of old news to the community. You might have some people that are just like, yes, it's confirmed, but cover athletes always going to be the first thing they're going to talk about. And then SDS typically has a roadmap of what they are going to talk about the rest of the month leading up to the game release and there might be some tidbits that you know might get confirmed that the community didn't know about like release dates or just like new features to the show new commentary things like that they kind of add that to the roadmap and they might kind of blank out like 
some like important features that might spoil it ahead of time. They kind of like to just tease you a little bit. So I think this is cool. The fact that like MLB The Show is going to announce something on the 1st of February when they said they were going to have news that month. Again, could just be forced by the leak, but don't really know for sure. All in all, if the leaks are true and the game is actually coming out in mid-April, I think a lot of us would take that. Yes, it's not mid-March like we've been used to with uh, the previous editions of the show, but knowing that it comes out late next gen, knowing that there's a coronavirus pandemic going on and you know the studio isn't in the actual studio as much, being able to work on the game like together as a unified studio community, that's actually very impressive. The fact that they have done this during the pandemic, they've added the Xbox version, they have all the next gen stuff to work on. That means they've been working their tails off to me. And it's pretty close to MLB opening weekend. To the fact where you're not gonna have a long wait, like the baseball season will have been maybe a couple weeks old at that point. So again, release date's not really confirmed. Um, we can speculate based on the Jackie Robinson cover that I saw with the early access stuff but if it is mid-april that's a win that's a definite win in my book the other thing too is typically they have a card that you can pre-order for the new game once they announce the cover athlete so not like an overpowered card by any means but like you know day one you load up the game and your team's all like commons and bronzes except for like the packs that you open like getting a guaranteed 85 overall player is pretty sweet they made a couple player of the month or finest like Tatis like players this year so I'm sure a lot of people would love to have a good hitting shortstop on their teams day one even if it's not complete end game card so that would be a cool thing too for the community to have news on tomorrow if they pre-order the game I'm hoping we know a little bit more about where you can pre-order the games too I guess I never really did talk about the uh, standpoint of why I thought this Jackie Robinson one might be fake. Basically, there's this account on Instagram that tagged a bunch of creators in the MLB community, told them about this leak, and it wasn't quite the confirmed leaker that we had with like the Funko Pop guy and Nerdy Dad for the GameStop ones for like the Tatis covers. I like went on Instagram myself and asked the guy like, where'd you get this image? Is it legit? And he said, oh yeah, like SDS posted it early and then they took it down on accident. I took a screenshot of it. I thought that was kind of odd just from the fact that like he was the only one that noticed. Which isn't to say it's not true. I mean if it was like Twitter or Facebook or something people definitely would have noticed. But I remember one time a tidbit of like the game got leaked on a GameStop ad that was personalized towards somebody on Facebook or Instagram. And they kind of took like a screen recording of it. Nobody else had that personalized advertisement yet. And it was like a week early. When I asked the guy on Instagram if he could post the full screenshot, he said he didn't have it. So that's where I was led to believe that it was probably fake. Nonetheless, if this is a fake, it's a pretty damn good one. Aside from like a couple aesthetic cover issues, they really did their homework. They added the cap. They added like the, the tears at the top. They had the early access stuff here, which fits the whole timeline of the game. Usually you release it and do the early access four days ahead of time then it comes out to the rest of the community you know based on when like the other gaming releases are during that week so i don't know this is kind of crazy news a lot of speculation these last few days i'm hoping that there's more that san diego studios decides to share here over the next few weeks uh cover athlete aside like again i hope they have that roadmap where they can give us a definitive you know, here's where we're going to talk about each of these things. Because that's what the community wants, ultimately. Like, they don't want everything right now, because then there'd be nothing to do until the game actually releases. Like, if you have a roadmap and you're able to talk about something a week at a time, keep the community invested and excited. That's the way to do it. That's my thoughts, my speculation on the matter. If you follow me for my logo stuff, uh, realize this is January 31st. SES hasn't made an announcement about this yet but typically in a normal year if you do a logo transfer year to year the deadline for that is today so if you have a logo that isn't in the vault upload it today again nothing's confirmed but just based on the pattern that we've seen in years past 
go ahead and do that if you want to be able to use your stuff for next year. This is Kasabi signing off.